Hi everybody, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be exploring the western side of the Black Shroud. So there's not a whole lot of points of interest, but we're just going to go to, here we'll take a look at the map. We're just going to go to each sort of point here. We're going to go through the lakes and we'll see what all this stuff looks like down here. So yeah, let's get started. This theme here is called the Seventh Gate. This is a theme that I've seen in one of the videos of people running like a skirmish. It's one of those songs that as soon as I heard it, I was like, I need to know, I need to find out what theme this is. like it starts like this part here is like one part I really like about this song it's just like a good battle theme unfortunately I, I did try to get the chocobo to work but I, I followed the instructions word for word and I must not be doing something right but it just, it seems I just can't get it to work, so. I'm gonna still try to figure it out. That way we can just kinda see how the chocobo, like, moves. And really just, just uh, get a look at the chocobo. The gobu mount is supposed to be working too, but for some reason, yeah, I just can't get it to work, so it's kind of a bummer. So hopefully in the next day I'll be able to figure that out. I'll go ahead and kind of get a glimpse of the, the Tam Terra D crap. Okay. Just wanna make sure I said that right. Like this part of the theme. Like, this is like the part of the song where I was like, I need to figure out what song this is. I play it sometimes in current FF14. Like, having YouTube over the music in the game or the sound in the game. Oh yeah, this was, this was the dungeon that they uh, redid in 6.1. This is with all the green sort of floaty orbs. <laughs> this is what it looks like in this version, and it looks like there's another level. So, we're not gonna get too far in there. Uh, we'll save that for dungeons. But it's like, you instantly, you instantly step in here and you just know like it just looks just the same or similar obviously the layout's different but it's like the textures and stuff you instantly know that like this is the deep crop this theme is so good See, some of these scenes I'm hearing from the first time, I wonder if they have... Oh, I don't want to go over here. I wonder if they have these somewhere in current FF14. There's, there's still a lot of stuff I haven't done in current FF14 that I would like to do. Most of the new the stuff that I don't know that becomes new to me, it's just like, I kind of just find out as I go. Like, <laughs> there's one instance where for two weeks, I've been trying to get into a party to do the Binding Coil of Bahamut. Just gotta pause for a moment for this. 
theme here. Oh, we got like a tree over here. But, uh, for two weeks I've been trying to get into like a, like, duty run with the binding coil. And I've been doing that for like two weeks and I think this was like before I knew about the party finder. Uh, but I, at, at one point, like, it got to a point where I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just do this party finder because I found it out by uh, somebody in my free company who wanted to do the Endwalker X2. So then, at the at one point, I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna try the party finder. Uh, there was somebody that was actually looking to do the binding coil. So I was like, cool. So I joined their party and we started doing the runs. And uh, we did we did really good, except like, I think it was like the final boss. I think it was binding coil turn five. A very hard boss. Um, but we end up getting somebody like, we, we've had some issues with some of our tanks. We eventually got uh, a tank who, like, his character was, like, the coolest character ever, because, like, his character was based off of Gus from Berserk, and it looked really just like him. He had the big sword, he had black armor on. Like, it was impressive. I, I honestly thought they just bought it in Gus in the game. But, uh, yeah, so with him we were able to it took us several tries but we finally beat that last boss and then a week later somebody in my free company was looking to do the same thing and somebody was like well you know you could just uh, oh, what's the term you could just unsync it and just run it by yourself and I'm just like I waited two weeks Two weeks just to do mining coil, and then I finally got in a party with somebody, and then I could just unsync it. I think I could just run it solo. I was like, well, it was. I mean, it was. It was a lot of fun doing it with other people, because at least the people, for the most part, that I was in the party with, they were just, you know, they're trying to run it. People were running it for clears or practice and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's just so funny. I was just like, I could have just done this by myself. But it's it's more rewarding when you're doing it with people. Cause then if I did it on sync, it would just probably just be really easy. Okay, we gotta make sure we're going the right way here, so... Because there is a camp. There's a camp somewhere over here. Take a look at that. Okay. Oh, okay, it's, it's clear over there, so... Okay. Just keep following this road here. So after that, I was just like, okay, I just need to ask because I'm still learning about the game. It's like, can I run Bahamut unsync just so I know? And they're like, yeah, and I'm like, okay. That's the thing, it's like, you do it with other people and like, you know, there's a lot of trial and error, but like, once you, like, you have multiple runs of it, and at which point it's just like, you get to that point where it's like, ah oh, man, maybe we should just kind of, no, disband and kind of do other things. 
but then like it's that last run that you finally beat the boss and then just just like it's much more rewarding than just soloing and unseen in my opinion. That's kind of why I with like new trials or dungeons other than extremes like I won't look at like a guide or anything. Because I like kind of just finding it out as I go. I mean, I'm, I obviously it would make it easier on other players, but I kind of like the unexpected. But yeah, yeah, that was uh, the first time I've seen Uiswa again in, in game. Other than the main cutscene that ended this version of Final Fantasy XIV. Let's see. Just trying to think of other music we could set this to. Let's just set it to normal. I do plan on doing or running through all the theme songs. I'll probably be more like in the city states once we've explored all of those. I like this place a lot better when it's raining. Because it's just like how I remembered. Okay, let's see what we got down here. Might just be like a, you no, know, a cave, but. Oh, whoa, what the hell is this? Just looks like something we saw in Lenosha with the, the cobalts. Is it is this supposed to look like something? Huh. I mean, it's still kind of generic K, but we got this weird object in here. I wonder what that was used for. Hmm. Maybe we'll like try to find some like articles or like wiki pages that kind of detail some of these objects. So that's what kind of sucks is like I can't really interact with them and find out what they're used for. Because like in one video I pretty much said like this is almost it's just archiving this version if they're not going to do a legacy server. I did restart and Walker on a new character. And uh, yeah, I kind of did the, uh, I sort of bought my way up to level 80. Um, 
But I did it on a class that I already knew, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I, I mainly did it just so I could, you know, be on a different data center and just, like, across the world, just, uh, you know, just kind of play with other players on the other side of the world. Rather than just here in the United States. And, uh, yeah, the first cutscene when you're in the boat is actually, uh, a shot by shot, like, recreation of, I think it was Shapeless Memory. I think that was the very first cutscene in Lipsa Lamenta. And I saw a video of that already, but, like, actually being in game and watching it like it's almost entirely just spot on like when I was watching it I was kind of curious like I was like did they have the same like code for the cutscene and then they just took out existing models and replaced it with current 3D characters that they have in current FF14 Because a lot of the animations are the same. Like in particular, there are two people sitting on these sort of like steps. And one guy is like looking at this other character who they're kind of just sitting down. And uh, the animation is literally just like spot on. In this version's cutscene, it's really cool. I almost want to know how many, how much references in current FF14 reference this version. I'm sure there are a lot. No, other than the seventh Umbral Calamity. Let's see, how far are we away from the... Okay, we're not too far. It's it's kind of funny, like knowing Black Shroud and the Realm Reborn and walking around this version. It's like I still feel like I'm in Black Shroud, but it's just like I'm going on a different path. Like, even though it's, like, very, like, zigzag, cavernous, like, it still feels like I'm in Black Shroud, but I just kind of entered a different area. I just wish there were more NPCs out here. I mean, well, in all honesty, I wish this was fully functional. Because like I said, like, if this game was fully functional, I would play it, and I would probably would enjoy it. I mean, I'm really just enjoying doing this. So like, imagining if it was fully functional. Like, everything was fully functional. Yeah, and I'm eager to, like, check out all the market wards, because I know a lot of those are different. The retainers, or the way they set up the retainers in this version is a lot different. Okay, so... We gotta just double check this. Okay, I'm probably just a uh, overpass there. There is something that I found in Gridania that was a lot 
like, well, I guess not a lot, but it's like, it's, it's very interesting. I sort of kind of explored an out of bounds area just by nudging my character through the rocks and yeah, Cortana will be the first city state that we do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that because just because we're gonna go to explore the city state, I do want to kind of explore the city states a little like out of bounds too. Just to kind of see, like, especially old doll, like what it looks like from a higher standpoint. But uh, yeah, there's there's a a particular part out of bounds that you can get to in current FF14 that I thought was a leftover from this version, but it actually turns out. It's the exact same. So that's going to be interesting to, to showcase. Okay, we're almost there. Here, the Garlean ship. This way. Yep. See, when you're walking around like this, even when, like, like I would do this sometimes in current FF14, because obviously my character is has like mounts and stuff like that, flying a lot. Like for some reason, like when I'm just doing stuff, like it's it's good for like crafting when you're gathering, if you have to gather a bunch of stuff. But like if you're flying around the world on the mount, it just starts to feel like the world is like a lot smaller than your first run through. So like sometimes I just won't even use my mount at all and like the world just feels a lot bigger. I didn't want to teleport. This was crimson. Helps. Still nobody here. Okay, well... We'll kind of just skim around this area, we won't go everywhere, because... I mean, obviously it's just mostly going to be the same. So we'll go up there, we'll pop teleport down, we'll go back here. We'll leave this theme on since we haven't really played this one. So for 6.1, patch 6.1, I was so excited to hear that they were bringing back the Hillebrand quest. So I haven't done all of them, but I've done the one in A Realm Reborn, the Heaven Ward, and I think there's one either for Stormblood or Shadowbringers. But uh, the Hillebrand quests are just like literally my favorite quests in all of FF14. So I remember when I first started it, like, I accepted the quest and like, this is when I was trying to do all the side quests, like mainly just all the side quests in the Realm Reborn. And I kind of held it off for a little bit, and then I finally got around to actually doing it, and then it's just like, like, it was something that I needed while I was playing. 
a 14. Like, the quests are just, like, so fun to do, and it's just, like... Like, when when you, when you he does the, uh, sort of, like, gentle medley pose or whatever, it almost just makes you want to do it in real life, just to other people, just, just to be weird. It's just, like, that's my favorite emote out of all, like, the quests, is the gentle medley pose. And I hope, like, the next quest line I have to do and the Endwalker quest line, I hope they have more of that sort of funny poses. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll go up here and we'll kind of wrap around. But yeah, they honestly should just make an entire game based off of Hillebrand. Like, that would be amazing. And it was funny, because when I started it, I was thinking, okay, this is probably going to be maybe like six quests long or whatever. Not going to be anything big. But yeah, that like... It was like this whole sort of mini series in FF14. I was just like, I can get behind this. I really like this. And then uh, I, it was later after that that I found out. I think in this version, 1.23b, they actually had a Hillebrand quest. I was wish something I could do in here, but it, I don't think it's really possible. And who knows, it might honestly be the exact same, but regardless, it's still fun to just to do like, stuff like that. Like, if it existed in this version on even just Project Meteor server, like, I literally would wouldn't mind recording it, even if it was the exact same in A Realm Reborn. But technically it would be different because the map layouts are different. Okay, we're kinda going to a dead end there. So we'll just look at this lake here and we'll teleport back down. Kinda of, got of like a dock area here. Wonder if this was like a port to go to like Gordania. Okay, let's teleport. Teleport back. That shroud. No, I thought this was going to take a lot longer, but, like, video-wise, but it actually just almost about taking just about the same amount of time as, uh, Lenosha. Of course, with the census so copy and paste, there's no reason to cover every aspect of Black Shroud. We'll just be seeing a lot of the same stuff. Let's change the music. Here, let's change it back to that battle music. I forgot what the ID of it was. 
Number nine. There we go. I'm gonna try to find that point where this skirmish took place. So I'm gonna go through and watch a lot of the, or we watch a lot of the videos that I've seen. Okay, I changed my mind. We're gonna go down here and just explore this part here. Maybe this over here. Didn't even see that area down there. But it seems like the... Like... There's places with names on them that are actually a lot more... There than you think. I guess from learning from the last video that there are areas that are not entirely marked but there's actually stuff there. Trying to listen to this theme song because it's so good. We got those tree like arc tunnels. I do have in mind of getting like a more professional microphone. Just trying to figure out how to, what setup I want to do and what's something that would be good. Like an actual microphone, not just something that's on a headset. At least, like, this headset has been able to get me started on something that I didn't even think I was going to be doing. Okay, let's go down this way. So I, I believe I explained, like, I think I've been wanting to do YouTube for, like, had it been at least three or four years and it's just like people are like oh yeah you can just do like a let's play channel and I was like yeah I could do that you know I was just debating on it for a while and honestly I really did not want to do a let's play channel because it was just kind of like well, I'm kind of just doing the same thing as like everybody else like, I kind of want to do something that's at least a tad bit different. Uh, I'm not going the right way. Gotta go down through this place here. So, my first attempt at a uh, doing a last play was Kingdom Hearts 3 and <laughs> yeah I, I, I remember saying in a video I spent like I think two hours recording it and like 
I mean, it was Kingdom Hearts 3, which, I mean, nothing against the franchise. I just, I was kind of glad I didn't play it all the way through that game. Like, Kingdom Hearts is definitely, like, a series I, I wanted to get into. Like, I own the first and second one for PS2. So I played a little bit of the first one, and that's generally seems like that's probably the best one. So, uh, a friend of mine did tell me, which I forgot, that they did a remaster or like a compilation of up this way. We got a compilation of the first, second, and I think the third, or not the third, but like the kind of like I don't think they're really spin-offs, but like sort of like side games. So I might consider getting that. That way I'm not looking at PS2 graphics. But yeah, it was one of those uh, series that I wanted to get into, but like, I when I was younger, I, obviously we didn't have a lot of money, so. And like, I did a couple years ago bought a PS2, and I bought both those games to give it a try, but then it's like, I'm looking at PS2 graphics. So it's a little hard to get into. Um, maybe I wanted to go up that way. I feel like there's just gonna be a wall here. Oh, uh, there's a cave, but it's probably not gonna lead me anywhere. Oh, there's a door here. Let's see what we have behind this door. Oh, it's a uh, deep crop. Nothing on the map. Okay, so it looks like we were supposed to go up there. Just to save a little time, we'll, we'll run Sonic Speed back up to where we were. Okay, so yeah, we're supposed to go up this way. I see why I don't normally want to breeze through with the speed set to 30. Okay, okay, yeah, because then we gotta cross that bridge. And then we get down over here. Oh, well, that was my mistake there. I was actually going the right way for once. But uh, going back to Kingdom Hearts, yeah, so when the third one came out, I was like, oh, okay, they're doing Toy Story. So I was like, okay, this is probably the time when I can actually get into uh, Kingdom Hearts finally, because it's like, you know, high-res graphics, you know, not that I really care much about graphics, but it's like, okay, it's a new Kingdom Hearts game, I'll play it and I'll see what I think of it. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of glad I did it. I mean, I still have my box set for it. I mean, I plan on keeping it, but yeah, it's just like, I honestly had no idea what was going on in that game. And I just watched uh, a group of people went through and played the entire game. I was just like, Kinda of glad I did a play, play it and start a let's play channel off of that. So 
so then at that point it was just like okay i guess you know i just i'll just kind of focus on trying to do video game design and animation and stuff like that and then i just want to even think about youtube so yeah it's probably like i think that happened about yeah it was la like last year or maybe the year before and and I mean, throughout, like, when I started playing FF14, I was like, I, I mean, I kind of had in mind, like, okay, what, is, is there anything I could, you know, do YouTube with this with? And then I was like, well, if I did a Let's Play channel on FF14, I, uh, obviously there's a lot of reading and stuff like that, so I'm like, I'm not sure if I... kind of want to record myself all this dialogue that I practically just read in my head. So, yeah, then I pretty much finished Endwalker and I was like, well, I guess that idea is kind of, you know, out the window. And then that's when I got curious about this version and seeing that there are people trying to put this together which shout out to them for you know making all this happen like I, like I said I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the people at Project Meteor trying to you know rebuild this game which is kind of funny to say let's just say we built this version of Final Fantasy XIV now uh, all that and there's actually nothing over here. I guess I was actually wrong. Well, let's see what's down here at least. But yeah, as soon as I got curious about this game and saw that when I finally got it to work, I was like, oh cool, I can go and explore this this old Eorzea and but then in the back of my head, I was like, oh wait, I honestly could do this for YouTube. And so I was like, oh no, now I can't explore it. And uh, I don't know if I told this story. Here, we're gonna teleport back to... But yeah, I don't know if I told this story, but ordered a headset off of uh, Amazon and I did their fastest shipment, like two day shipping. And usually I order everything off the internet, mainly because I'm just a person who doesn't like being in public too much, other than like at work. Uh, 8002. So, just real quick, we're gonna see where we're going to next. Okay, down there. So, yeah, I ordered a pair of headphones off of Amazon, and I believe it was a Tuesday, and it was supposed to be here, I think, Thursday? Thursday or Friday? And it, I think it cost me like $30. Like, this is how impatient I was. So I'm sitting there, I think it was Wednesday, I was like, if I bought a headset today, I could start recording Thursday on my day off. So I was like, you know what? They had the same headset for $100 at Walmart. The exact same headset. And I was just like, you know what? Like, I just want to get in there and just start exploring these areas. So I was just like, screw it. So I went and bought the same headset for $100 when actually I could have had it for $30. But like, it's been a while since I've, well, you know, when I 
started playing FF14, like, the excitement was there, but when I... When I got this to work, the excitement was just sort of overbearing, like... Or overwhelming. Like... <laughs> my hands were literally shaking when I got this to work. Like, shaking in excitement, like, oh my god, I can't believe this is working. Like, even though it's not complete, just being able to have this on my computer and just walk around it whenever I feel like. So, yeah, it was like... It was like, it was one of those things where it's like... I just immediately knew, like, oh, hey, I can do this for YouTube. And I do plan on making everything more like an official channel. It's just, they're just kind of some things I want to get through first. Like, first the exploration of these main zones. Like, pretty much once I finish. Black Shroud, I'm going to be doing a bunch of other, like, well, obviously, like I said, we're going to do the City States next, but I'm also going to do a lot of, like, other stuff while I'm recording those videos. Because I do want to make this official, I do want to eventually do Twitch. So it's just a matter of doing one thing and then starting another. Ooh, this area is a lot, a lot more open. So I believe we want to go this way. So, let's see, yeah, we'll head down here and then we'll head back up. We're kind of getting in some different areas here. Just makes me wonder what kind of monsters were, like, inhabiting this area. Like, I'm sure there are similar monsters that were in a rubber war that were in this. Or that were in this version that are similar to Rumble Borns. Like the like the sort of spider like monsters in a rubber war were probably also like just roaming about here. I'm trying to remember, like, I did fight some monsters when I went up to Emerald. Or the Camp Emerald. Just trying to think. I'm trying to remember to see what kind of monsters they were. I th I think they were the spider like sort of. I don't know the exact name of them, but yeah, those sort of like spider monsters that were hanging out in like the watery areas. I'm pretty sure that was one of them. It's like this huge watery area here. I gotta say the water looks really good in this. Like for a game that's like 10 years old, like the water looks really good. Get a, get a nice view of this area. Okay, let's make our way back up here. We'll kind of just check this area out. And we'll 
probably be done with the uh, sort of Western and uh, Black Shroud. Then all we have is South Shroud left. I think after the uh, city-states, we're going to do the Dolomol videos. Because one thing that I'm doing off, like, sort of camera is, like, I'm doing my own sort of exploration. That way I can soak in every zone and I'm gonna do the same thing with the city states once we've gone through them. Because I kind of want to get to know this world more before those videos, so the Dolomol videos would be like the very last thing. And then, yeah, it will be through each zone, but they're not going to be like, you know, 50 minutes long. Probably a good 10, 20 minutes. And then we're going to do all the city-states. Because there's one thing I have not seen. I mean, I, I guess I did kind of see it in Gardania, but it wasn't like, it wasn't super obvious. But I didn't see the Dolomol Meteor sort of sky in Limsa or Ulda. So it'll definitely be interesting seeing what that looks like in the actual town. Or at least in those towns. Because the meteor is just massive. Uh, another lake area here. Oops. Thinking of current FF14 with current screen. The thumbnails for the city states. I'm doing, I'm gonna try to do something a little more like arti artistic than the uh, sort of normal way I've been doing thumbnails. Okay, let's get a snapshot of that. Let's see where else is. That goes to Mordana, which we probably can't go in there. So uh, we've already been up there, so yeah, let's teleport back and then we'll be set for the next area. Uh, Bent Branch, that's the central point. And that will wrap up for today's video, so... Thanks for watching guys, and if you like what you see, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down in the video, let me know what you think about FF14 uh, version 1.23, what you think about Black Shroud or the other areas. So, thanks for watching guys, and take care.